Finally, we can now talk about how we can implement the stack or queue ADT using the so-called dynamic arrays, as opposed to the conventional fixed size arrays, which we know definitely has its uh, inflexibility and also drawbacks in terms of the running time. And let me first of all set up the context very quickly, just about why we may want to consider another strategy for implementing the uh, data structure. And whatever we talk about right now is going to be applicable to both uh, the stack and queue, but in the example code, which I show on the slides, it only shows the stack, but you can definitely think about how it can be applied to queue as well. It's definitely uh, applicable, right? So when we implement the stack and queue by using the conventional fixed size array, we impose a maximum capacity, if you uh, recall what we did before. For example, in the case of the array stack that we spoke about earlier, you can see we got the data array over here and we got a maximum capacity constant, which never changes its value. So once we initialize uh, in the constructor, the data array to be of this certain size, we don't really have a mechanism to really uh, increase the size of the array. So that means, when you actually try to push the uh, some new elements into the stack, however, the current size of the stack has already reached the preset uh, maximum capacity. In that case, it would be simply constant amount of time to really compute because we simply throw a new exception to say you actually violated the precondition of the stack uh, not being full when you actually want to push the uh, element into it. And similarly, we also have the same maximum constraint on the uh, the QADT implementation using the conventional fixed size array, right? Similar, you can see once we reach the maximum capacity uh, for the Q, we simply uh, simply throw some exception to signal precondition violation, similar. And one thing to note, even though the running time for both uh, this case over here and also this case over here is very efficient. It simply costs constant uh, uh, constant amount of, uh, amount of time. However, as we uh, noted before, it's very inflexible for the clients of the stack because they will be annoyed whenever you reach certain capacity for the uh, uh, stack and queue that were set by the implementer internally. You can see in this case, it's actually 1000. In that case, the clients cannot really use the stack or queue anymore because unless they actually have to dequeue or pop certain items off. That's very inflexible from the public point of view. So what we would like to do is to say, if you really reach that uh, preset maximum capacity, you should be able to allow the stack or queue itself dynamically to adjust their size to be bigger. But now, how bigger should it be, right? So we now we got two strategies over here that we want to talk about. Let me give you a very quick overview. So there's some uh, example codes to really uh, for you to get an idea, and then I'm gonna uh, focus more on the rigorous mathematical analysis for the asymptotic upper bounds. I think that's more important for us to gain from uh, this case study. So we got two strategies over here about resizing the array dynamically, right? That's why it's called dynamic arrays. We got two strategies over here. The first one is so-called constant increments or fixed increments. Let's say constant increments because the increments you add up uh, every time when you do resizing is simply a constant, okay? So that'll be the code over here. I'm gonna go over that in just a moment. But the line I want you to pay attention to is you can see we still got this case over here uh, for the size is equal to capacity. But rather than throwing some exception, now we wanna do something more sophisticated. What I want you to pay attention to is we are creating a new array over here and the new capacity is the old capacity plus some constant C. And the constant C over here may just be set by the constructor over here, right? So I just put a 500 for example, but it can be any arbitrary constant, but just remember it's a constant value, right? It's not really uh, a, uh, a proportionate to the input size or, or something. It's simply just a constant, right? And we're gonna talk about it. And this is the first strategy. And also uh, we have to uh, remember that uh, over here, since we're using a loop to actually copy over all the old contents into the new array, since we are growing the size of the array. That's something actually we spoke about when we talk about how to insert into the middle of an array earlier in lecture number two, I believe, right? So whenever you have such a loop to really copy over all the contents into the new array, in that case, it will be linear time unavoidably because you, uh, the original size will be just n, right? That's something to keep in mind. And then we're gonna talk about how we can analyze the average running time uh, for this one, rather than just worst case. If you ask me about the worst case, it's uh, simply big O of n, right, over here. 
There's no question about it, and we can uh, close the case already. But we can. There will be some more interesting analysis we can do is to talk about the average running time, given that the push, and uh, specifically given that this particular block of code about resizing may not happen for every push operation because you only push when your stack or queue has been filled up by all the items, right? So you don't really necessarily uh, resize all the time. So that's why it might make more sense to be more accurate about what's the, really the average running time, right? That's something we'll like to talk about, right? And also we will refer to uh, this part over here as the resizing part over here, right? Just about resizing and copying over the contents. And this part over here is about updating the index and also to uh, to uh, actually really push the item into the newly created uh, bigger array, right? So that's something we'd like to uh, go over in detail, right? That's number one. And I would like you to study the code itself uh, on your own very quickly. And that's actually rather straightforward to really see, but I already pointed to you what should be highlighted. And the second strategy, I want to just compare them side by side before I go on to do the, uh, uh, to do the analysis. The second one is called doubling strategy. So we want to use uh, still implement a stack using dynamic array, but now the size, the resizing strategy we uh, we adopt is called doubling. Meaning that over here, we don't have that fixed constant anymore. We still have our capacity, but now whenever you want to do the resizing over here, that one there is actually going to create an array, a new array, and the size is going to be doubled, right? You can see the capacity, and then the capacity will be uh, updated every time after the resizing, it will be the original capacity times two, right? So every uh, so the first time you do the resizing is going to be two times the initial size, and the second time after you have done the resizing is going to be four times the uh, original size and etc. Okay, right? It's called doubling, and also we got if you ask me about what's the worst case running time for this, it will be just big O of n because of this particular loop, because you're trying to copy over the old contents into the new array. In that case, it will just be big O of n, worst case wise. However, as I said before, this block of code, let me repeat again, because it's so important to really know why we are doing average case or uh, so-called amortized uh, analysis of the runtime. It's because this block of code is may not necessarily be invoked every time you call the push. It's only invoked periodically whenever you actually got the current capacity uh, reached by all the items. And you only actually resize and execute this block of code at that particular timing. And after the current resizing, you will take another while before, actually, before you actually do the next resizing. So now we want to ask for the fixed constant strategy over here, strategy number one, versus the doubling strategy over here, which one is going to require less frequent uh, resizing? Because every time when you do the resizing, it's actually going to take a linear time. But let's say if one strategy will take sub uh, substantially less frequent invocations of the resizing uh, portion of the code, in that case, the average time, we can average this out into maybe uh, maybe uh, several uh, push operations. In that case, the average time will be substantially lower. So that's kind of the intuition I want you to have, right? I'm just hand waving a bit, you know, just uh, just give you some very quick overview about what we want to do, right? And all right, so that's about just this very small part just to let you know about the context and also about the two strategies. And before I start uh, the next part, uh, well, of course, in the next part, I'm going to talk about the rigorous asymptotic analysis. I want you to do the two uh, following uh, little exercises. Number one, I want you to look at the code over here for the fix, uh, the fixed constant increment strategy over here. Especially understand how the capacity, and uh, also how the new array are updated. Number one, and also do the same exercise for the doubling strategy over here. Just make sure you understand exactly how the code works. All right, and all right. So let's uh, before you uh, after you have done uh, these two little exercises by understanding the two pieces of, uh, pieces of code, and we'll now move on to the mathematical analysis.